three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. This is The Real Pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter, here. Hope you're all having a great week so far. So I have a review for... I'm going to be honest with all of you. I, I've i really been sitting here looking at my notes. I don't really know how to review the movie I'm about to talk about, but we will see. It's a movie called The Father, which is directed by Florian Zeller. Florian Zeller, this is really their, um, so it looks like they, yeah, as far as their direct, uh, directorial debut, this is it. This, this is the first film they have directed, and I will just give this away. What a, what a hell of a, of a debut here. Um, they also were the writer, uh, co-writer of this, the other writer, Christopher Hampton, it's done some stuff that, um, just off a of tone mint alone, uh, that already I was, I I was like, well, that's that's amazing, <laughs> and it's of course stars Sir Anthony Hopkins as Anthony and Olivia Coleman as Anne. I'll run through Anthony Hopkins' filmography here in a moment, but Olivia Coleman, you of course know from uh, the Tom Hardy film Lock. You know her from her Oscar-winning turn. Uh, as Queen Anne and The Favorite, which I have not reviewed on this podcast, but I need to review The Favorite because that's an incredible film. Uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, she was in The Lobster as well, which is a very underrated movie, might I add. And, of course, now The Father. Now, Sir Anthony Hopkins. I will forever be grateful, forever grateful, uh, for for Anthony Hopkins because... He, of course, Hannibal Lecter, Silence of the Lambs. I saw that film when I was five. I was supposed to be asleep, but I, you know, pretended I, I wasn't and watched the movie. And Anthony Hopkins has been one of my favorite actors uh, ever since. He is just a masterclass when you think about... <laughs> when he got cast as Odin and Thor, I remember going, what? They got Anthony fucking Hopkins? And even in stuff that's not great, you know, the Wolfman remake uh, that came out in 2010, I wasn't crazy about. But I thought he was actually really great in it. He did that movie Fracture of Ryan Gosling, which if you have not seen it, it is a very underrated film. Would highly recommend that you seek that out. Um, if you haven't seen uh, The World's Fastest Indian, the film he did in 05, that is well worth your time. I acknowledge the movie I'm about to mention is bad, but I don't care. He did... Uh, that movie Bad Company <laughs> with uh, with Chris Rock. I really enjoy that movie. I know it's not a good movie, but I enjoy it. Uh, if we go, I mean, Legends of the Fall, Nixon, back in 90, uh, back in 95. Uh, he did Dra Bram Stoker's Dracula in 92. I mean, the guy's done some incredible stuff. And really, over the last, I would say, 15 years, when you look at uh, you know, the, the Thor films, where he was great in those. You look at him as a Methuselah in Noah. Uh, he was great in that. I hate that they made him run in Transformers the last night. <laughs> but outside of that, you know, did King Lear in 2018. That was great. The Two Popes, which I uh, didn't get a chance to review, but I really did enjoy. Um, his portrayal as Pope Benedict was absolutely incredible. So Anthony Hopkins has been getting his groove back a little bit here. And... What makes this film so hard to review is that there's not a lot to spoil, but it's such an erratic film, but it's supposed to be. So I so it's it's hard to really kind of break it down. But as far as the film itself, one thing I really love about this movie in particular is the score. The score is so beautifully haunting especially given the subject matter um i i love 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 uh i love the score here but um i'm gonna butcher his name uh 
Ludov- uh, Ludovico uh, Inaudi, Inaudi is what I'm going to go with. He went ahead and did the uh, composed the music, and he did an incredible job on the music. Um, but this movie goes ahead and follows Anthony, played of course by Anthony Hopkins, and his daughter Anne, played by Olivia Coleman. So Anthony. And I'll get. And I'm gonna bring up that character name here in a second. But the way this is portrayed, we are basically Anthony in this. The way the film is shown to us, you're watching Anthony just you know live his life. But as his dementia sets in, the film really starts to fuck with you, and it becomes almost akin to something like. Uh, like Donnie Darko, where you really start to question everything that you're seeing on screen. And that in particular, I watched this by myself, which I'll be honest, everyone, I don't know if I'd watch this with someone, (laughs) maybe a significant other, maybe, but I don't know if I'd even want to do that because this movie, it's one of the best movies. It's going to go in that 12 years a slave. And I know I always reference that movie, but it's going to go in that category of film where I go, this is a great film. I love so much about this, but my God, this will be something I'll own this at some point, but something I'll definitely only watch if I need to cry because, (laughs) because the movie really does just hurt you. Um, The movie itself, like as, as I mentioned, starts off with this beautiful music playing and Anthony is being told by his daughter, Anne, that you need to have a caregiver. Because you come to find out that Anne is going to go ahead and move to be with her boyfriend. And Anthony is completely freaking out about it. Not just because Anne is his daughter, one of his daughters, but also because it's his flat and he doesn't want anyone there. Ideally, he wouldn't even want Anne there. And that is where really where the film very quickly let you know how much his dementia is set in because Anthony clearly knows something is going on. And as much as he fights it, he knows something is going on. But the part about this movie that is so heartbreaking is watching how he treats Anne, not just his dementia setting in, but the fact that Anne is doing everything that she can in her power to not only, you know, basically smooth over his his ego to an extent, but also because she clearly understands that he is just not aware of, of of everything around him, and so she's trying to be sympathetic to that. But Anthony's making it extremely difficult. The movie starts off with him turning, as I mentioned, that caregiver away that Anne wanted uh, to get for him, but Anthony freaks out because he thinks that the caregiver stole his watch. And instead, he goes into his room and finds it. And when Anna brings it up that, hey, the watch is here, it was in one of your hiding places, his first reaction isn't, oh, thank you so much. His first reaction is, how would you know about my hiding places? And it's just that little bit right there that the film gives you early on to let you know, hey, this is the direction this is going. So you need to, you know, you need to understand that. This is this is where we're going. And if you're not okay with that, you might want to turn it off. It's it's really, really hard to watch. Like it, it's really difficult uh to, to to see that. And if memory serves Anne and Anthony have been living together for about 10 years and Anne moved in with him to make sure that his mental state obviously didn't deteriorate, but unfortunately this is where we are. There is a scene where Anne goes ahead and gets another caretaker uh, who's played by, uh, uh, I always butcher your name, I'm sorry, Uh, Imogen Poots. You, of course, know her from, I would say, Meany Morrison Wells. Uh, If you have not seen The Art of Self-Defense, you really should, and, of course, Green Room. She's an incredible actress, and she doesn't have a lot of scenes in here. She only has maybe uh, generously probably about 10, maybe 15 minutes of screen time. But there is a scene with her and Anthony Hopkins in particular that starts off so charming and so fun. And 
Anthony Hopkins, he, uh, uh, Anthony is, you know, hitting on her, being his charming self, even offers to get her a drink, does this, uh, this is dance that you see in the trailer that I went, oh, that's, that's pretty funny, but the flip, and I'm not even going to say when the flip occurs, but when the flip occurs, when he's talking to Laura, it is one of the biggest burns I've seen in a movie in a minute, and it goes from very lighthearted and fun, and oh, he's being charming, this is Anthony at his best, to him being such a genuine grade A asshole <laughs> that I was I was drinking my water and I actually had to pause it and go, oh no, this is where the flip occurs. And when it does, it is just it it, it is it is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking in the in the best way. Um there again, there's so much here as far as dialogue that I go, well. All right, because the problem is this movie, again, it puts you in his brain. It puts you in his state of confusion. So you're going to see something and go, oh, that's crazy. And then three minutes later, you're going to see something that undercuts exactly what you saw. And the movie does a great job of making you go, what's real and what's not? As the film gets to its conclusion, it makes you somewhat more aware of what of what it's it, it's showing you, but you're not gonna you're not gonna be as the audience. You are not in control of this film, and that's the best way I can put it. So if you frustrate easily, this may not be a film for you to watch. Also, I would tell you, and and I and I watched it just like this. I was sober as a dog. I didn't even smoke uh, to watch this because, to be honest, I was sitting here thinking, you know. This would probably be a huge bummer of a movie. This would kill my high, and that's a waste of weed. So I didn't even smoke before watching this. I didn't have a drink or anything. I was dead dog sober. And in watching this, I'm sure many of us, unfortunately, have had to deal with a uh, you know a grandparent going through this or, or, or what have you, or a parent or whatever. And the film is captures the feeling of you being the Anne in this equation of you just trying to be there for that person and trying to stay patient and not take things personally. It's so hard to do, but the film does a brilliant job of capturing that. And Olivia Coleman, while I was mad that she, and I'll admit it, I was mad she won for the favorite because I really thought that should have been uh, Lady Gaga's award for, uh, for uh, Star is Born, but Olivia Coleman, I, I, I did go back and watch The Favorite maybe eight months or so ago, and she is just she has just become. I'm I'm so happy she's getting her shine, and to be honest, she deserves an Oscar nomination for this. I I I, I don't know if she'll win this year, but she damn sure deserves a nomination. And Sir Anthony Hopkins, Sir, if I was wearing a hat, I would tip it to you because my God, his portrayal here as far as his confusion versus his anger there's a point where uh mark uh gaddis who you know uh, the, i know him, uh, i know him as mycroft from sherlock and of course he was in uh the favorite as well as as a uh, lord uh, marlboro uh he's great god he's great in that show uh, in that movie too but there's a scene where, and again, I won't kind of explain if it's real or not, but where Anthony believes that he that his character is married to Anne, and his character hits Anthony and hits him a couple times and talks about how much longer are you gonna hold on and ruin and ruin Anne's life? How much longer are you gonna be a nuisance? And you hear Anthony start to whimper as he's getting hit. And you just see him just crouch down this corner and start crying. And that was the point for me that, I, or one of the points in the film, I had to pause it and genuinely cry because it was just, it was just, it was hurting me to, 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 to watch it. And there's something involving his other daughter that I won't spoil here that really made me go, oh my God, this is like, oh God, what is happening? It, it, 
the, the, the movie just continues to just throw these things out there and then take them back, but then tweak it in a way that you go, oh, that's even more devastating than what I thought I originally saw. And again, the film does a great job of not letting you know what the hell is real or not until it's re- really ready to show you, uh, really ready to show you its cards. It's it's really really confusing, and but in the best way. There's a line where Anthony Hopkins flat out is talking to uh, to Laura, and this is earlier on when he like first meets her, and he's kind of filling her in on his life. He goes. Oh, I have another daughter, a painter. She was always my favorite. And Anne is right there, not five feet away. And I'm sitting there going, dude, ease up a little bit. Like, she's going through all of this for you. And it cuts to Anne, and you just see that she's trying so fucking hard to keep, to stay faced. But that these words, rightfully so, are fucking hurting her. And it just really, it really just, it, it really just bums you out. And it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it, it's incredible. There's a dream sequence that Anthony has involving a, uh, involving a, a pillow. And that's all I'm going to say. And that is really, that scene in particular is where I went, oh, we are completely we are completely just not in a good spot right here. And really from that moment on is where the movie really, really ramps up. This film is an hour and 37 minutes. And I will say the best decision that this film made is to not make this two hours. Because at two hours, it's really floating around being torturous, I think, for the audience. Because this is such heavy subject matter anyway so the fact that they went we can tell the story in 97 minutes and not overstay our welcome i actually really appreciate that decision was clearly made and the fact that at the end of the day where this film ends and the last shot of the film i thought was so well done and so incredibly beautiful and so incredibly poignant uh, again, I'm looking through my notes here, and there really isn't a lot of notes that I took because it really is just one of those things you're gonna have to watch and really just kind of unpack it and understand it uh, for yourself. But the biggest compliment I can pay this film is that it completely, a hundred percent across the board, really gives you the experience and the frustration of dealing with dementia, not just as a person who is trying to be there for the person with dementia, but having dementia yourself. The movie captures that perfectly in a way that really hasn't been captured on film in a long time. Uh, Anthony Hopkins is running the gamut of emotions, whether it's senile, egotistical, downright fucking mean, charming. He runs through everything and not to take away from olivia coleman because you know she has to stay face and everything and and be that be his rock but this is really this is a master class for sir anthony hopkins and he really gets to show why he's been one of the most revered and respected actors for as long as he's been in the game i am genuinely in admiration of the man. I, I I already was going into this, but somehow my level and my love for him grew even more after this performance. I, I, I just, nothing but respect to everyone in this film. Everyone brought their A game, and this is well worth your time to watch. Again, I understand this is not an easy watch. I, I completely understand that. But at 97 minutes, it's well worth your time. Start your day, watch this in the middle of your day and then watch something really fun afterwards because, yeah, don't end your day with this. But to get to my final thoughts here, I really don't have a complaint about this film. Really sitting here thinking about it. Yeah, I I mean, if you want to say the subject matter is a complaint, again, fine. But honestly, as I've said before, 
film isn't always supposed to make you happy. Sometimes film supposed to, film is supposed to bum you out. Sometimes it's supposed to make you angry. Sometimes it's supposed to make you think. And this film will do all of those things and more. Um, again, this is something I will buy at some point. It'll go in that. It'll be in that category of stuff I will watch. You know, if I if I need to cry, I would put this on. Or if I really just wanted to watch an incredible performance, I might put this on. But I oh god, what do I want to give this? Yeah, you know, even though it's a sad film, I still have to give this a fan fucking tastic because I really do not have complaint about it. I thought the score was perfect. I thought the cinematography was absolutely incredible. Uh, Olivia Coleman and Anthony Hopkins, they are true students of their craft. And to see someone like Olivia Coleman, who is really, as I mentioned earlier, is really starting to get her shine, bounce off an actor as prestigious as Sir Anthony Hopkins. She's right there with him. So while I'm giving a lot of praise to Anthony Hopkins, she deserves just as much praise. It takes two to tango. And my goodness, do they tango very well together. But this is well worth your time. Watch this at least once. This is a fan fucking tastic for me. But everyone, the father, have you seen it? Let us uh what'd you think of it? Let us know in the comments. You can follow us. Uh don't forget to like our pages on Facebook at the Real Pineapple and Real Pineapple Games on Facebook, as I mentioned. Don't forget to uh not just like those just because you know I want you to like them, but I'm gonna be streaming on Twitch for the first time later this month when Retromania Wrestling comes out. So get ahead of the curve and go and hit that follow button on Twitch. You can find me on twitch.tv slash the real pineapple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Give us a rating too. You can find us on SoundCloud, Apple and Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher and iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, and Tune Up at the Real Pineapple. And you can also don't forget to follow yours truly on the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. That's R E E L Pineapple. And you can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First. Thank you so much for listening. We'll have more reviews here coming up on the way, um, including. Well, actually, I'm not going to post this until uh, late in the month, so I don't really know what else we'll have coming up. But we'll have reviews coming uh, coming your way soon. Please stay safe out there. Check in on your friends. I know we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel in this pandemic, so please check in on your friends. Make sure they're okay. Take care of each other. Don't forget your mask, and we will talk to you soon.